Hi everybody, I am Mother and I'm gonna try my best to explain the ice physics in the new track media game to you. Now there are two different types. There is the bob slaying, which requires you to keep as much grip as you possibly can and build up as much speed as possible. And then there is the flat ice, which requires more technical drifting, etc, etc. Now the, obviously that one's more difficult, but right now I'm gonna show you the bob slaying. On training actually no probably summer 3 is better because at least everybody can play that one so this is a bob slaying map there are two turns a right and a left now in the tighter corners the tighter bob slay corners you want to try use the yellow line as your visual cue and the faster you are the higher up the wall you want to be and the slower you are, the lower you want to be. But ideally, the lowest point you want to be is on the yellow line, as I will demonstrate to you. You can see the inputs right up on my camera as I do it. I am playing with a controller, and I would thoroughly recommend using a controller if you want to play on the ice maps. And then on these longer turns, you actually want to use the red lines, the two red lines as your visual cue, as I will show you right here. So on these longer wall rides, you want to use these two lines right here as your visual cue. Now the faster you are, again, the higher up you want to be. And the highest point I've noticed that actually works... Oh, I finished the map by accident. Oops. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, I'll show you again. My bad. What's happening here? Okay. So this first wall ride, you want to use this as your visual cue. Oh, hello, there I am. Now, but use this first red line as your visual cue for low speed, and then this one for higher speeds. So this is for your lower speed. This is where your right wheel should be. But as you go faster, obviously you want to stay higher up so you don't fly out of the map. And just ride it all the way around. I'm surprised I'm still going. Jeez, look at me go. <laughs> I'm not even pressing anything. <laughs> Um, but for these longer wall rides, like I said, you want to use these two red lines as your visual cue. So again, the faster you are, the higher up the wall you want to be, and the, to the highest point, I've noticed, at a very high speed, where your left wheels should be on basically just barely on this red line, as flat as possible. So the car is exactly parallel to this, but obviously for this map, you just want to stay roughly, roughly here in the middle, and as you get faster, go higher up, higher up towards this line. I'll demonstrate that for you right now. Again, you want to approach these like normal war rides up nice and early and just minimum steering to keep grip. It does take a lot of precision and, and practice. And if you are going to play this, I thoroughly recommend using a controller as it's a lot easier to keep the grip. But I'll do that one more time so you can have another look at the inputs. So up nice and early, car parallel, and just light steering to keep the grip. Very light steering. Obviously, I didn't do a very good job of it here, but I'm just trying to show you as an example. Now, that's the bob slang. For the more technical ice drifting, uh, which one is it? Where's. Oh no, I have to go to the training maps, that's right. So if you go to training number. What number is it? 23? Yeah, 23. This is the technical or Tokyo drifting, as you would have heard it. Now for this, I recommend using camera one. It does not matter whether you use a keyboard or a controller. It can be done on both quite easily. But you basically want to turn your car beyond 90 degrees and then counter steer while holding the throttle. And as you can see, that makes the car drift. Okay, that was a pretty poor example of it. Let me just do it one more time. But yeah, steer beyond 90 degrees and counter steer. And when you're ready to get out of the drift, just simply release the gas. Now for the tire to turn, you want to hold the brake. You actually want to hold the brake to keep get a tire to drift. So you can see I'm counter steering and braking at the same time. And that gives you a tighter angle on this turn. And another thing you can do as well, if you want to spin around a little bit quicker, you can actually hold the brake while spinning around. And again, it just turns it around a bit faster. So if you have higher speed and you need to turn around a bit faster, you can just hold the brake. 
that will demonstrate this map for you, training map 19. And I might even show you map 25. Actually, no, I won't bother. If you want to extend the drift, again, if you want to extend the drift because you haven't got enough, you can just simply do small brake taps. Like this. Obviously, this map, it's not necessary. But if you want to keep the drift going, just keep tapping the brake. Like so. But for this, you don't really need to. This one's well calculated. Yeah, just... And if you find that your drift angle is a bit tight, you can just do tiny releases of the gas as well. But yeah, that's my explanation of the ice physics. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up and a subscription. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.